begin so we'll start off with question number 18 uh, straight away all right question number 18 is that big question i was telling you it is a very important question this is that question under ifhp would you have to work out the day before the examination okay it's extremely important it covers good number of adjustments it covers pre-construction interest as well so we'll work out this question from scratch we'll work out this question in the same manner in which we would have worked out had this question come in the examination so with 100 percent presentation proper presentation with you know proper discussions with a uh, full focus on conceptual clarity we're going to work this question out okay let's begin guys all the concepts which i've already discussed with you under ifhp keep them in mind remember about pre-construction interest all the six steps i hope you recall remember what if part of the house self-occupied part of the house let out what if part of the year self-occupied part of the year let out all the concepts should be there in your mind okay so let's begin let's start question number 18 let's give it one proper reading first let us understand the question in full detail and then we'll re uh, then we'll work out the question one by one okay let's read the question a and b construct their houses on a piece of land purchased by them in new delhi so we have two people a and b okay the built up area of each house is 1000 square feet ground floor and an equal area in the first floor understanding a and b we have two people we have A and B. A and B both construct their houses on a piece of land purchased by them in New Delhi. Built up area of each house is 1000 square feet ground floor and an equal area in the first floor. So A is constructing a house. Even B is constructing a house. Both the houses we have ground floor and we have first floor. Both are equal 1000 square feet, 1000 square feet all the uh, basically totally four houses a has two floors b has two floors and all of them are equal then the question says a starts construction so they're giving us information about a a starts construction on 1st april 2022 completed it on 31st march 2023 this is about this is information about a then they're giving us information about b they're saying that b starts construction on april 1st 2022 and completes the same on 30th june 2023 so they've given us information about both a and b then the question comes back to a a occupies the entire house on 1st october 2023 what do you mean by a occupies the entire house it means first floor also self-occupied ground floor also self-occupied guys because he's himself occupying the house however on the other hand if you look at mr b however b occupies the ground floor on 1st july 2023 and he lets out the first floor for a rent of fifteen thousand per month see listen to what comes next the tenant vacates the house on 31st december 2023 and b occupies the entire house during the period jan 1 2023 to 31st march 2024 have you understood what has happened read once again first of all b occupies the ground floor so ground floor is self-occupied and first floor is uh let's and first floor is let out okay this is initially Later, what happens? The tenant vacates the house. Which house? The first floor. B had let out the first floor, right? So the first floor tenant vacates the house on 31st December and B occupies the entire house. So he self occupies first floor also, Jan to March 2024. You understood? So Mr. A, very simple, guys. Full house self occupied. Very easy calculation. Mr. B, ground floor self occupied first floor let out first floor don't you think first floor part of the year let out part of the year self-occupied tell me part of the year let out part of the year self-occupied how do you treat it you treat it as if it is let out for the whole year right so um, for mr b ground floor you will do self-occupied only is simple first floor only complication will be there 
part of the year let out part of the year self occupied so you will treat as if it is let out for the whole year that you know then look at the other information following is the other information fair rental value of each unit 1 lakh municipal value of each unit 72000 municipal tax paid by a municipal tax paid by b repair and maintenance charges paid by a repair and maintenance charges paid by b Again, they are giving us special information about Mr. A. They are saying that A has availed a housing loan of 20 lakhs at 12% per annum on 1st April 2022. Okay, loan information they have given. B has availed a housing loan of 12 lakh at 10% on 1st July 2022. So, for both of them, loan information they have given. No repayment is made by either of them till 31st March 2024 which indicates the whole loan is fully outstanding. What are they asking us to calculate? Compute IFHP for A and B for assessment year 24-25. Assume that A and B have opted out of the default tax regime. Opted out of the default tax regime indicates what? Indicates, uh, indicates that you're going to be following the normal provision, guys. Right, opted out of the default tax regime, opted out of. So, we're going to be following the normal provisions, okay? So, this is all the information that they have given to us. We have two assessees, A and B. A has a house, B has a house. A has fully self-occupied the house. B has self-occupied the ground floor. First floor, part of their letter, part of their self-occupied. For both A and for B, they have given municipal value numbers, fair rent numbers, municipal tax number and all. For both A and B, they have given us information about loan. They've given us information about when construction started, when construction completed and all. They are not asking us for total income calculation. They are asking us only for IFHP calculation. They are saying assessee has opted out of the default tax regime, which means normal provisions. What if assessee was not opting out of default tax regime? That is, what if the SSE was following 115 BAC? I've already discussed with you. If SSE is following 115 BAC, only one thing will change, guys. What is it one thing? Self-occupied house or let out house? Very good. It will change only for self-occupied house. And self-occupied house, what will change? Only one thing will change. No interest deduction. No interest deduction under Section 24 at all for self-occupied house. You know it, right? So that will be the only change. Had it been 115 BAC, but here anyways, SSE has opted out of 115 BAC, which means normal provisions only you're going to apply. Okay, so with all of this in your mind, now let us begin working out the question. We'll work out for Mr. A first and then we'll work out for Mr. B. Okay, so write down answer to question number 18. Under this write down Mr. A, give the heading Mr. A hyphen computation of income from house property computation of income from house property okay so uh, and and for mr a ground floor first floor both self occupied so tell me do i have to do separate calculation for ground floor and separate calculation for first floor do i have to do a separate separate calculation or can i do one single calculation I'll do one single calculation for ground floor, first floor, everything put together. I'll do one single calculation. Okay. So write down self-occupied okay. under this write down net annual value. You know very well how do you compute for self-occupied property? Self-occupied property you start with net annual value, which is always zero. From this, what do you subtract? Deductions under section 24. How many deductions will you have? Only one deduction. What is that one deduction? Interest. Interest on borrowed capital. As soon as we talk about interest and borrowed capital, what comes to your mind? What is the rule that we've made for ourselves? As soon as we write interest and borrowed capital, immediately our mind thinks of two things, pre-construction interest and current year interest. We're talking just about Mr. A. 
tell me, look at the question and tell me, for Mr. A, will I have pre-construction interest, yes or no? For Mr. A, will I have pre-construction interest, yes or no? Think and tell me. Take your time, think and tell me. I have told you already how to check. Think, apply all those rules and tell me. What are the things I'll check? What is the date of construction? Date of construction completion? And what is the date of borrowing? Tell me, when did the construction get complete for Mr. A? A starts the construction on 1st April 2022, completed it on 31st March 2023. So what is the date of construction completion for A? 31st March 2023. Right, for Mr. A we are checking here. What is the date of borrowing? When did Mr. A borrow the loan? Look at this. A has availed a housing loan when? On 1st April 2022. 1st April 2022. Now tell me, will we have pre-construction interest? What did I tell you? How to check? Before date of construction, pre-construction was the loan already existing. Before construction, was the loan already existing? Yes. The construction got completed only on 31st March 2023. Before that, on 1st April 2022 itself, we borrowed the loan. So pre-construction, before construction, the loan is existing. So therefore, will I have pre-construction interest? Yes, I will have pre-construction interest. So we'll have pre-construction interest, current year interest, that whole drama which I've done for you already in the last session, whole thing we will be doing once again now. Are you ready? Yes, come on guys, let's begin. Write down in brackets over here, working note. One. Okay, leave some three lines gap. Open working note number one. Give the heading, interest in uh, hyphen Mr. A. Okay, now under this write down part one, just like how I've done for you even in the earlier question, same way we'll do part one, give the heading pre-construction interest. You know, we don't straight away start the computation. You know very well, we first write that why do we have pre-construction interest? Only then we start the computation. So write down as loan was borrowed, Before completion of construction, come up, pre-construction interest, pre-construction interest is applicable, right? Pre-construction interest is applicable. Now we'll do our steps. I hope you recall the steps. Do not flip your pages. Try to recall entirely out of your memory. Do not flip your pages strictly. Okay. Tell me, how do we start? What is our first step? What's our first step? Our first step is date of date of completion of construction. Right? Date of completion of construction. Now look at the question. When did we complete the construction? Tell me. When did we complete the construction? See, we have all the dates here itself. Date of completion of construction is 31st March 2023. Date of completion of construction, 31st March 2023. One small correction in the question. Date of completion is not 31st March 2023. Date of con completion is April 1 2023 please make this correction the date of completion of construction it's written as march 31st 2023 right correct it it's not march 31st 2023 it is april 1 april 1 2023 okay so accordingly i'll do the correction here also date of construction completion is 1st of April 2023. Okay, coming back to the question now, coming back to the solution. So, date of completion of construction is 1st of April 2023. Now, what's the second step I've told you? Second step, tell me. Preceding 31st March, 
preceding 31st March will or one more thing we'll compare preceding 31st March or date of repayment and out of these two dates we pick whichever is the earlier date right now tell me just before 1st April 2023 what was the last 31st March guys it's going to be 31st March 2023 right and do we have any date of repayment no if you remember the question says no repayment was made so no date of repayment so we'll write not applicable so out of these two which is the earlier date the earlier date would be 31st march 2023 now coming to step number three what is step three step three is going to be your pre-construction period i hope you recall all these guys pre-construction period now tell me when does it start what have i taught you when does pre-construction period start it starts on the date of borrowing, right? It always starts on the date of borrowing and it goes on till when? It goes on till our step two date. So what is the date of borrowing? When did we borrow the loan? Mr. A borrowed the loan when? On 1st April 2022. So see, we've written it here also. Date of borrowing, 1st April 2022. And what is our step two date? Step two date is 31st March 2023. Now tell me how long is this period? This period is exactly one year guys so this is our pre-construction period now comes step four step four is going to be our pre-construction interest right what is pre-construction interest nothing but in this one year how much interest have we incurred what is the interest expense in this one year very simple what is the amount of the loan amount of the loan is 20 lakh interest rate is 12 percent 20 lakh into 12% for one year. This is going to be how much? This is going to be 2 lakh 40,000 rupees. This is a total pre construction interest. But tell me, will I get the full pre construction interest deduction? No, we will get a deduction only across five years. So step five is always step four divided by five, that is 2 lakh 40,000 divided by five, which works out to 48,000. So 48,000 rupees deduction you will get of pre-construction interest per year, totally for how many years? Totally for five years, right? But five years starting from then. I've discussed all this with you. We've learned that we will start getting 48,000 deduction only once we start having IFHP. When will we start having IFHP? Only when my house is ready. Only then we can say that house property has come into existence. Only then we will have IFHP computation. So when did my house get ready? In which year did my house get ready, guys? My house is ready. My house construction is complete in previous year, 23-24. So 23-24 onwards only I will have IFHP for this house. So 23-24 onwards for five years, I will get a deduction of this 48,000 right so what will be my list of five years we'll have previous year 23 24 then previous year 24 25 then previous year 25 26 then previous year 26 27 and finally previous year 27 28 in these five years i will get a deduction of this 48000 each year and my current year in the question is 2324. So 2324 is in this list. So therefore, in my current year in 2324, yes, I will get this 48,000 deduction. And discerning in my current year in 2324, yes, I will get this 48,000 deduction. Okay, see, listen, I'm just trying to give you a little bit more clarity. This I'll, I'll help you uh, understand in the same way in which we had worked out one of the earlier questions also. Remember, we had drawn a timeline. We'll draw the same timeline and we'll try to get a little better clarity. Okay, what are all my dates? Come on, tell me one by one. When did I borrow, guys? What is my date of borrowing? Date of borrowing, we borrowed the loan on 1st of April 2022. This is when we borrowed the loan. Okay, then tell me, when did the construction get completed? The date of construction completion is 1st of April 2023. Okay, and we are calculating for which year? For 23-24, that is 1st April 2023 to 31st March 2024. This is the year for which we are doing the IFHP calculation. Now, before the date of construction completion, what was the last 31st March? The last 31st March is going to be 31st March. 
right so the same diagram which i had done for you even in the last question from the date of borrowing till 31st march 2023 what will you call this this is going to be called as the pre construction period this is your pre construction period guys so up to 31st march 2023 up to preceding 31st march till this date till this date it is pre construction period then tell me the next date onwards that is after 31st march that is 1st april onwards 1st april onwards is what will i call it post construction period no we don't call it post construction period what do we call it we call it as current year we call it as a current year interest basically this point onwards the interest will come under current year interest so till 31st march 2023 till this date it will go under pre construction interest and after 31st march 2023 whatever interest you have incurred that will come under current year interest so for pre construction period uh, for this period the total interest was 240 this 240 we will get as a deduction across 5 years starting from 23 24 onwards so mr a pre construction interest everybody is clear same six steps i followed step 1 was date of completion of construction step 2 was preceding 31st march or date of repayment whichever is earlier step 3 is pre construction period which starts on the date of borrowing and ends on the step 2 date for this period the interest will be pre construction interest that interest divided by 5 will be allowed across 5 years 5 years starting from the year in which we completed the construction okay so this was it about our part 1 under working note 1 pre construction interest so how much pre construction interest am i having 48000 but tell me is my interest working note over no as soon as i talk about interest two things come to my mind one is pre construction interest and the second is current year interest so i'll have one more calculation i'll have part 2 part 2 is going to be current year interest current year interest means which year which year are we talking about we are talking about previous year 23 24 in 23 24 how much interest have we incurred see they are saying that we have not repaid any loan so full 20 lakh is outstanding so what is current year interest then current year interest simple right 20 lakhs into 12% so this full 2 lakh 40000 is going to be my current year interest all right now after this what do we do we do a summary generally so part 3 is going to be our summary so under summary write down how much is our pre construction interest guys pre construction interest in the current year how much are we going to claim 48000 then next line write down current year interest how much current year interest are we going to claim 240000 so what is the total interest now total interest is 288000 so can i take this number and put this number in my main answer as it is of course not of course not this is a self occupied property mr a full property self occupied no so immediately what will i think about i will think about my limits how many limits do i have two limits for self occupied property 2 lakh limit and 30000 limit of course i will first try to give 2 lakh limit but if i want to give 2 lakh limit i have to fulfill how many conditions i have to fulfill three conditions what is the first condition the loan should be borrowed on or after 1st april 1999 fulfilled yes fulfilled loan is borrowed much after 1st april 1999 it is borrowed only in 2022 first condition fulfilled what's the second condition tell me why did you borrow the loan you should have borrowed the loan only for purchase or construction of the property yes we have borrowed a housing loan we have borrowed the housing loan only for purchase or construction of the property even second condition fulfilled tell me what's the third condition third condition says you must complete the construction within five years from the end of the year in which the loan is borrowed Remember, I was telling you in the earlier question, it is not five years from the date of borrowing. It is five years from the end of the year of borrowing. See, I'll help you. When did we borrow the loan, guys? We borrowed the loan on 1st April 2022. Which year is this? Which year did we borrow the loan? What is the year of borrowing? Year of borrowing is 22-23. What is the last date of this year? The last date is 31st March 2023. Now, from the last date of this year, within five years, within five years would be what? Five years would be 31st March 2028. So, you must have completed the construction by 31st March 2028. Did you complete the construction within this date, guys? 
Yes, on 1st April 2023, much before this date itself, we have completed our construction. So all my three conditions are fulfilled. So what will be the applicable limit here? The applicable limit here will be 2 lakh rupees, right? Come on, let's put down a note for that. Write down. Loan was borrowed. Loan was borrowed on or after 1st April 1999. Loan was borrowed for purchase or for purchase or construction of house. Loan was borrowed for purchase or construction of house. Next line, write down. Construction was completed within five years from end of financial year of borrowing within five years from end of financial year of borrowing next line write down as all conditions are fulfilled the interest of rupees two lakh eighty eight thousand will be restricted to rupees how much will be restricted to rupees 2 lakhs for section 24 deduction. So we are going to restrict the interest to 2 lakh rupees. So take this 2 lakh rupees to your main answer. Interest on borrowed capital 2 lakhs we will subtract. So what is our net number? We will get a negative 2 lakhs. We will call this as loss from house property that's it about mr a guys so mr a it was very simple he had one single uh, he, uh, he had self-occupied both the units so i'm doing the calculation as if one single house one single house self-occupied i did the calculation the most interesting part of this adjustment for mr a was a pre-construction interest part i hope everybody is confident this is the third time that we worked out all the pre-construction interest steps so you should be crystal clear by now. You should be extremely comfortable with all these steps. I'm betting you guys, you follow these six steps. No chance you will make a mistake. The answer will happen very fast. At the same time, it will be an accurate answer. So let's go to Mr. B's calculation now. With this Mr. A's calculation, I'm hoping everybody is comfortable. You pre-construction interest especially. Once again, anyways, you'll be seeing pre-construction interest for Mr. B as well. Okay, so after all this, write down the next point. Uh, give the next heading. Write down Mr. B. Mr. B. Give the heading Mr. B hyphen. Computation of income from house property mr b computation of income from house property now look at the number of concepts involved here we've already spoken for mr b ground floor self-occupied okay but first floor part of the year let out part of the year self-occupied so we're going to treat as a first floor is let out for the whole year so see that is that one concept is anyways applicable. One more concept is applicable. Part of the house let out. Part of the house self-occupied. What will you do? You will treat as if they are two separate houses. Right. So first floor, I'm going to treat as if it is let out. Ground floor self-occupied. Part of the house let out. Part of the house self-occupied. You will treat as if they are two separate houses. So first we will put on a note for all of this. And only then we will start working it out. So under this write down. Give the subheading first floor. Against this write down. It is let out. 
for a part of the year it is let out for a part of the year see it is let out for how long guys the question says tenant vacates on 31st december so it is let out till 31st december so it is let out for how many months you can't say nine months because the house is ready when see look at this i'll tell you what and all you should consider B starts the construction on 1st April 2022, completes the same on 30th June 2023. So first of all, do you agree that the house is ready only on 1st July 2023? The house is ready, guys. Construction got complete only on 30th June 2023. So house is ready only on 1st July 2023, first of all. So 1st July 2023 only, he started giving it on rent. And the tenant occupied my house till when the tenant occupied the house till 31st December 2023. After that, we self-occupied Jan, Feb, March, three months we self-occupied. So now tell me, the when, when I say that it was let out for a part of the year, for how many months was it let out? You can't say nine months. You'll have to say July, August, September, October, November, December. You'll have to say only six months. Did you understand this? The house construction was complete only on 30th June. So the house is ready for occupation only 1st July onwards. So you will treat as if the SSE owns the property only 1st July onwards. So July to 31st December. This is the let out period. This is going to be six months. So for six months, the property is let out. Come on. And self-occupied for the remaining part. Self-occupied for the remaining part. What is the remaining part, guys? Remaining part is only three months. Jan, Feb, March, three months. Self-occupied for three months. Therefore, this unit will be assessed as if, as if it is let out, as if it is let out for the whole year. Then write down after this next subheading, ground flow self-occupied. Next line write down. As one unit is let out and the other unit and the other unit is self-occupied, come on, they will be assessed as two separate houses. Okay, so this is it about our introductory point. Now let's do the computation. So we'll do a separate computation for ground flow and a separate computation for first flow. Let's finish off ground flow first. It's easier, it is self-occupied. So write down under this ground floor, give the subheading ground floor in brackets, write down self-occupied. Okay, self-occupied property, tell me now, how do you start calculation? You will start with net annual value. Tell me, what is the net annual value of self-occupied property? Zero. Then from this, we'll subtract deductions under section 24. Self-occupied property, so you'll have only one deduction, which is interest on borrowed capital. Now, again, the same thing I'll ask you. As soon as you see interest on borrowed capital, what comes to your mind? Two things, pre-construction interest and current year interest. Now, look at the question and tell me, for Mr. B, will we have pre-construction interest? Yes or no? Same method which you applied for A, same method you apply and tell me, for Mr. B, will you have pre-construction interest? Yes or no? How do we check, guys? Same method. Okay, same method we'll check for B now. 
Tell me when did B complete the construction? What is the date of construction completion for B? B starts the construction on 1st April 2022 and completes the same on 30th June 2023. So what is the date of construction completion for B? It is 30th June 2023. And when did Mr. B borrow the loan? What is the date of borrowing? See, it's given to us over here. B availed housing loan 12 lakh 10 percent when? On 1st July 2022. So now tell me pre-construction, before construction, pre-construction was the loan existing? Yes, even before construction loan was existing. So do we have pre-construction interest? Yes, we have pre-construction interest. Are we clear? How do we identify whether pre-construction interest is there or not? Before construction got completed, before that itself, loan is existing. That itself indicates to us that we have pre-construction interest. Okay, so again, we will need a proper full-fledged working note we will need. So what you do is after this, after, uh, given brackets over here, give reference to working note number two. Okay, and after that, leave ample space, leave around 20 lines gap because you'll have to do uh, first flow computation also. So, leave easily around uh, 20 lines gap and then after that, write down working note number two, working note number two hyphen interest Mr. B. Same way, guys. First part one, pre-construction interest. In brackets again write down, as the loan was borrowed, as the loan was borrowed before, before completion of construction, Come up. Pre construction interest. Pre construction interest is applicable. Pre construction interest is applicable. Okay. Now you remember the pre construction interest steps? Same steps tell me. What is the first step? Step one, write down date of date of completion of construction date of completion of construction tell me when did mr b complete the construction we have the date right here 30th june 2023 30 june 2023 then what is step two step two is preceding 31st march or date of repayment right out of these two dates we pick whichever is the earlier date now tell me what is the preceding 31st march just before this date what's the preceding 31st march 31st march 2023 and was the loan repaid we just read the whole question the question clearly says nothing was repaid by either of the assessees so which is the earlier out of these two dates 31st march 2023 now comes step 3. Step 3 which is your pre-construction period. Try to recall and tell me what is the pre-construction period? When does it start? It starts on the date of borrowing and it goes on till when? It goes on till the step 2 date. So what is the date of borrowing of Mr. B? When did he borrow the loan? 1st July 2022. And what is our step 2 date? Step 2 date right here 31st March 2023. Now, how long is this period? This is going to be only nine months long, guys. Nine months long pre-construction period. Then comes step four. Step four is your pre-construction interest, right? So basically, for this pre-construction period of nine months, for these nine months, what is the interest amount which my assessee has incurred? We have to find. Now, if you notice, the question says over here that B's housing loan is 12 lakh 10%. So, what is the interest for these nine months? 12 lakhs loan, guys. Uh, interest rate is 
ten percent, but we don't want interest for the whole year. We want only for nine months. So into nine by twelve, how much is this going to be? This is going to be ninety thousand rupees. This is our total pre-construction interest. But we will get this as a deduction across how many years? Across five years. So your step five will be step four divided by five. That is. Ninety thousand divided by five. That is going to be rupees eighteen thousand. So eighteen thousand is what you're going to get as a deduction per year for five years. But five years starting from when? Five years starting from the date on which my house is ready. When is my house ready? My house is ready on thirtieth June twenty twenty three. Which is which year? It's going to fall under which year? It's going to fall under the previous year, twenty three, twenty four. So twenty three, twenty four onwards only for this particular house, IFHP you will compute. Only once the house is ready, only then you can compute IFHP. So twenty three, twenty four onwards for five years you will get this deduction. So step six, list the five years, guys. Previous year, twenty three, twenty four, twenty four, twenty five, twenty five. Twenty six, twenty six, twenty seven, and twenty seven, twenty eight. Our current year is twenty three, twenty four, which is falling definitely falling under this list. Therefore, current year we will get pre construction interest. How much? Eighteen thousand. We will get pre construction interest. Are we crystal clear? Are we feeling even better about pre construction interest now? Yes, guys. Feeling like any question on pre-construction interest, I will be able to handle. Are you getting that sort of confidence? Amazing, guys. Amazing. Very good. Trust me when I say this. This is the worst adjustment in IFHB, and this one adjustment I'm trying to, you know, make you all really thorough with it, so that anything that they ask you, you're able to handle. Till now, you've handled it amazingly well. Now let us see. Let us go to the second part. Tell me, is pre-construction interest with this? Is this working out over? No, I've told you. Whenever we think about interest, we talk about pre-construction interest and current year interest. But before we do the current year interest, shall we draw a timeline once again and see over here? Let us try to have a little bit more clarity. See the same timeline. What is the date of borrowing? Tell me. When did Mr. B borrow the loan? Date of borrowing is first July twenty twenty two. Right. Then when is the con construction completion? When did the construction completion happen? On thirtieth of June twenty twenty three. And right now we are calculating for twenty three twenty four. That is still thirty first March twenty twenty four. We are calculating. What is the preceding thirty first March before this date? Preceding thirty first March is thirty first March twenty twenty three. Now listen. You're going to have amazing clarity this point onwards. Listen carefully. See what is my pre construction period? I've told you pre construction period. We start on the date of borrowing till preceding thirty first March. That is what you've written over here, no? First July twenty twenty two to thirty first March twenty twenty three. Same thing only I've shared it over here. First July twenty twenty two to thirty first March twenty twenty three. This period is your pre construction period, right? Now tell me, thirty first March onwards, what should I call it? Should I call it post construction period? No, because in reality, don't you think in this period construction is still going on? April, May, June. For these three periods, in reality, construction is going on, right? So, actually speaking, literally speaking, even this is pre-construction period. But we stop our pre-construction period on this date. We stop our pre-construction period. All right. Now, what about? This interest. What about interest for this period? See, this this is this period which I've shaded over here. This is after the construction got completed. So after the construction got completed, this period is definitely going to go under current year interest, guys, because this is after the construction got completed. No doubt, no doubt. Thirtieth June onwards, it's not pre-construction interest. It is current year interest. My question to you is. What about this period? This period. What about this period? In reality, construction is still going on, but pre-construction interest is stopping over here. So where will this period go? See, you don't have a choice. Pre-construction, you're going to stop over here. 
So this point onwards, even though in this period actually construction is going on, you will merge it with current year interest. I've told you even in the last question, this point onwards, this point onwards, your entire interest is going to be current year interest. There may be a possibility that a part of this period construction is still going on. That possibility is there, but still this point onwards, it's going to be current year interest. That is the reason why we don't call this as post-construction interest. We call it as current year interest. Tell me, is everybody clear? So, 30th June onwards will definitely be current year interest. Even these three months will come under current year interest because I don't have a choice. Otherwise, where will I put these three months? Because pre-construction interest concept is clearly saying stock reconstruction interest on 31st March. So, the remaining three months over here, okay, fine, construction is still going on. But this three months interest is not falling under pre-construction period. So, no choice, dump it into current year interest. So, so do you agree if I say that it is possible that in current year interest, one part of the period might be actually construction period? One part of the current year interest, we might have a period where actually construction is still going on. But still we will put it under current year interest because pre-construction interest will end on the preceding 31st March. It will end. Okay. So now write down after this, write down part 2. Part 2, current year interest. Current year interest means which year? 23, 24. Now tell me, think carefully and tell me, current year interest, for how many months should I calculate? Don't forget, house construction was complete only current year June. So current year interest, how many months should I calculate? Amazing guys, very good. Current year interest, I will still calculate for all 12 months because no doubt, construction is complete house is ready only this period but what about this period interest in these three months these three months will not go into pre-construction interest therefore even these three months will come under current year interest only so for full 23 24 we will calculate interest what is the loan amount the loan amount is 12 lakh 12 lakh into 10 percent this is going to be how much 1 lakh 20 000 rupees after this, part 3, write down summary. We are done with the difficult part, guys. Rest of it is all simple. Summary, under summary, write down pre-construction interest. Pre-construction interest. How much is the pre-construction interest we calculated? 18,000. Next line, write down. Current year interest. 1,20,000 total 1,38,000 now tell me can I take this 1,38,000 fully can I take this 1,38,000 fully no because we are right now calculating only ground floor you recall, right? We are right now doing the calculation of only ground floor, guys. So, this 1,38,000 is interest for ground floor, first floor put together. So, for ground floor alone, how much equal units we discussed? So, for ground floor alone, how much from here take out two parts? Left hand side, write down. Ground floor in bracket self-occupied. Right hand side, write down first floor. In brackets, let out. So, ground floor would be 1,38,000 by 2, which is rupees 69,000. And first floor also will be another 69,000. Now, tell me, first floor is anyways let out. Will I think about any limit and all? No. Let out unit, no limit. But ground floor self-occupied, will I think of a limit? Yes. I'll try to apply 2 lakh limit. Was a loan borrowed on or after 1st April 1999? Yes. Was a loan borrowed for purchase or construction of the property? Yes. Was the construction completed within 5 years from the end of the year of borrowing? Yes. So all my conditions are fulfilled. Therefore, what will be the applicable limit? 2 lakh. It is well within the 2 lakh limit. Therefore, full 69,000 you will allow. So under this write down, as all 
conditions outlined in working note 1 are fulfilled comma maximum limit applicable is rupees 2 lakhs as rupees 69000 does not exceed the limit it will be it will be fully allowed it will be fully allowed done so come back to the ground flow working ground flow working interest how much you're going to allow 69000 what's your net number 69000 call it loss from ground flow done so this is it about your ground flow calculation guys interest calculation everybody is comfortable you're done, right? Fine. Now, after ground floor, write down, leave a line and then write down first flow. In brackets, write down, let out. Please don't forget, first floor is part of the let out, part of the self-occupied. So, that is why we are treating as if it is let out for the whole year. Remember, for everything else, you will treat as if fully let out, only for actual rent you will take actual rent only for the actually let out period you remember right generally we take actual rent for the entire period for which my assessee owns the property keyword is owns but here part of the let out part of the self-occupied everything else you treat as if fully let out only actual rent alone you will take only for the actually let out period so come on guys let's begin let out property how will we start We'll start with gross annual value. So write down gross annual value. Now tell me, can I use a shortcut in this question? When can I use a shortcut? What have we discussed? When do we use a shortcut? Only if municipal value, fair and standard rent, all the three numbers are not given to us. Can we use a shortcut here? No. We have the fair rent number. We have the municipal value number. So we can't use a shortcut here. So full-fledged steps we'll have to do. So come on, let's begin. What is our first step? Our first step is municipal value or fair rent. Out of these two numbers, we will pick whichever is higher. Now answer my question. Can I take 1 lakh, fa uh, no, municipal value is 72,000. Can I take municipal value 72,000 as it is? Can I take it as it is? No. Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. See. Listen. We are calculating for 2324. That is 1st April 2023 to 31st March 2024. For this period, we are calculating. Okay. Now, when is my house ready? Only on 30th June 2023. This is the date of construction completion. This is the date on which the construction got complete. Right. Now, section 22, charging section, okay? What does charging section say? I said, they should own the property. There must be a house property. So, a house property is there. Don't you think I can say house property is existing only for this period? You remember one question we had done earlier where my assessee had sold the house on 31st Jan. You remember? Assessee had sold the house on 31st Jan. So remember everything we calculated in that question for only 10 months. Because we will calculate only for the period for which Assessee owns the property. Only for that period you will calculate IFHP. Same thing guys. 
Sir, as he did not sell. Sir, as he here here the house property came into existence only on thirtieth June. So therefore, you will do IFHP calculation only for these nine months. Okay, only for these nine months. Now, out of these nine months, if you see till thirty first December. 2023 this period the property is let out and this period the property is self occupied so total 9 months out of this total 9 months let out is for 6 months self occupied is for 3 months now tell me municipal value you will take for how many months you will take for 9 months right so on basically in simple words Only for this period you will have IFHP calculation. No, this period, this first three months, there is no house property itself. So where IFHP calculation you will have? So you will have IFHP calculation only once a CSE owns a property. Only first you should have a house property. So you are having house property only this point onwards. So therefore all the numbers will be only this point onwards. So this point onwards, if you see this nine months, if you see in these nine months, part of the nine months let out, part of the nine months self occupied. You will treat as if full nine months let out. Understanding? I'll repeat one last time. These my whole focus is on these nine months. Out of these nine months, part of the nine months let out, part of the nine months self occupied. But I'll treat as a full nine months let out. So I'm going to do the calculation for nine months only. So municipal value seventy two thousand is for the whole year. So I need seventy two thousand into nine by twelve. I need only for nine months. Did you understand, everybody? This is going to be. Fifty-four thousand. What about the fair rent? Fair rent is one lakh. Again, same problem. One lakh is for whole year, but I need only for nine months. Now listen. One lakh into nine by twelve. This is going to be seventy-five thousand. Out of these two numbers, I want whichever is higher. Seventy-five thousand. Now listen. Did you notice each unit, ground floor or first floor? So these numbers are not given for the whole house. These numbers are given for each unit separately. Good thing. Had these numbers been given for the entire house, I would have had to find for first floor alone first. Then I would have had to calculate for nine months. Here they have already given us these numbers per unit. So first floor one lakh, ground floor one lakh. First floor seventy two thousand, ground floor seventy two thousand. So separately, separately they have given us the numbers. So for we see we are calculating for first floor. For first floor full year municipal value is seventy two thousand. We calculated for nine months. Understood, everybody? Had they not mentioned this, then we would have treated as if one lakh is for ground floor and the first floor. So we would have said, okay, fine, first floor fifty thousand. Then we would have said fifty thousand is for whole year. So what is for nine months? We would have done like this. But no need to do all this in this question because here they have given us numbers for each unit separately, separately. Understood, guys. Okay, so this is step one. Now comes step two. What is step two? How to calculate? Step two is going to be your step one number. What is your step one number? Seventy five thousand or your standard rent number. Out of these, whichever is lower. So step one number is seventy five thousand. Standard rent they have not given us, guys. So not applicable. Don't write zero. Right? Not applicable. Which is lower? Seventy-five thousand. What do we call this number? Reasonable expected rent. Now comes step three. Step three is going to be actual rent minus unrealized rent. Actual rent minus unrealized rent. Now tell me, actual rent I will take for how many months? Correctly tell me this time. We've discussed this multiple times in the past. Tell me, actual rent I will take for how many months? Correctly give me the answer, please. No hurry. Just give me correct answers. Come on, come on, tell me. Actual rent will be for the actually let out period, right? That is only for six months. Generally, we take actual rent for the period for which my assessee owns the property. But here, in such cases, I've told you it's an exception. If part of the year let out, part of the year self occupied, you will take actual rent only for the period for which the assessee has let out the property. So, what is the let out period? Let out period is six months. So, only for these six months alone, you will calculate actual rent. So, rent is how much? 
where is it written here lets out for 15000 per month so 15000 into 6 you understood guys generally we take actual rent for the period for which my SSE owns a property owns a property is 9 months over here so generally we take for period for which SSE owns a property but one exception I've taught you part of the year let out part of the year self occupied in these cases for everything else you will treat as a fully fully let out actual rent alone you will take only for the actually let out period actually let out period is six months for these six months alone you will take the rent this is going to be how much this is going to be 90,000 rupees we read the question we did not have any unrealized rent so 90,000 is a number then comes step four step four will be your step two number or your step three number whichever is higher so what is our step two number 75,000 our step three number 90,000 which is higher 90,000 okay see if you look at your ICA study material and all you will find slightly different steps okay but end of the day your answer will be the same and please know that there are multiple ways of computing all this all right there are multiple methods but end of the day answer should be uh, answer should be the same however ICA study material does talk about one more alternative method wherein unrealized rent is subtracted in the end after GAV. From GAV number, we subtract unrealized rent. One more alternative answer is there. That answer will, of course, be slightly different, but both the answers would be correct. You can safely follow this method. Guys, this method which I'm telling you is slightly easier than the various methods which are given in the material. All right. But please know that in the material, you might find for different questions, different uh, styles of computation, but you can follow this. It is fine. Step four is step two or step three, whichever is higher, which is 90,000. Then what is step five? Step five is vacancy loss. Now tell me, do we have vacancy loss in this question? Can I say that, you know, these three months property is vacant or can I say these three months property is vacant? No, no, we don't have vacancy loss. Vacancy loss means house is ready, house is existing, but neither self-occupied nor let out, no tenant is occupying, it is lying empty. We don't have anything like that because total nine months only we have. In these nine months, if you see six months let out, three months self-occupied. So the house is not vacant. There is no vacancy loss. Finally, step six, guys, your GAV number. GAV will be step four minus step five. That is 90,000 minus zero. That's going to be 90,000 rupees. So we have a GAV number now, GAV of 90,000 rupees. From this, what do we subtract? We'll subtract municipal taxes paid. Municipal taxes paid. Now see how much municipal tax B has paid. B has paid 8,000 rupees. So B would have paid 8,000 rupees for the entire property. First floor alone we are calculating. So 8,000 divided by 2, we'll consider only 4,000 rupees. So the net number 86,000 rupees, this becomes our NAV. From this, we'll subtract deductions. We'll subtract deductions under section 24. It's a let out property. So you'll have two deductions. Number one, you'll have a standard deduction. Please remember to show the calculation. Spoon feed the examiner with all the numbers. 86,000 into 30%. How much is this going to be? 25,800 standard deduction. And then interest. Interest on borrowed capital. Again, give reference to working note number 2. We've already done the calculation. For the first flow, what is the interest? 69,000. Let out property. I don't have to think about any limit and all. So what's our net number now? Net number is going to be a negative 8,800. This becomes loss from first floor. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll make a summary. Make a summary. Three column. Assessee. Self-occupied. And let out. Okay. Under assessee write down Mr. A and Mr. B. So Mr. A fully self-occupied. For Mr. A what's the net number from self-occupied? 
टू लैक सो मिस्टर ए अंडर सेल्फ ऑक्यूपाइड राइट डाउन नेगेटिव टू लैक अंडर लेट आउट जीरो सो वॉट इज नेट योर नेट यू हैव लॉस नेट लॉस नेट लॉस इज हाउ मच रुपीज टू लैक्स फॉर मिस्टर ए वॉट अबाउट मिस्टर बी मिस्टर बी सेल्फ ऑक्यूपाइड इफ यू सी सेल्फ ऑक्यूपाइड ग्राउंड फ्लोर वॉट्स ए नंबर सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड ओके एंड फॉर मिस्टर बी लेट आउट वॉट्स ए नेट नंबर अगेन नेगेटिव एट थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड सो इवन फॉर बी टोटल इज लॉस ओनली सिक्सटी नाइन थाउजेंड प्लस एट थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड विच इज गोइंग टू बी सेवेंटी सेवन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड got it nice big huge question but covering good number of adjustments that's why i always tell students to make sure that you work this question out before the examination okay it covers multiple adjustments it will teach you it will show you several scenarios where silly mistakes are possible especially mr b see day before the examination no need to waste time on mr a day before the examination you will be working out just for just for um mr b mr b alone you will work out and see understanding so hoping everybody is clear with this question can we close this question here confident with this yes have you marked it as important yes guys good number of adjustments especially pre construction interest with this you should be extremely thorough all right